In cells, there are many, many proteins that form the proteome. These have different abundances, um, they might have different post-translational status, which means they're chemically decorated after they're, after they're made. But one of the important things which I feel uh, has been neglected over the years is really where cells, uh, where proteins reside in cells. So they reside in particular locations, subcellular niches, where they carry out their function. When they get there, they will have the right substrates if they're enzymes to carry out enzyme reactions, the right binding partners, and the right chemical environment to, to do their jobs. Many proteins, however, moonlight. And they can be in multiple locations, and at each place, they may do something very different. We have, over the years, had low throughput technologies, which are very powerful which give us more or less a protein at a time where that protein is in a, in a cell. What we've been striving towards in my lab and other, other labs as well is to give proteins addresses on a global scale. So to give thousands and thousands of proteins an address for a particular cell in a particular state. So this is what we've been trying to do. And it's tricky, it's very tricky particularly as many proteins have uh, multiple locations, we want to be able to track those accurately. In the past, we've been um, struggling really to get a total cellular coverage. And uh, there are many reasons for this. I mean, partly it's the sensitivity of the instrumentation that's been available to us, but also it's the subcellular fractionation methods that we use. So in the past, we've had to take a sacrifice, so make a sacrifice on a part of the um, cell that we're not interested in. So, if, for instance, if we were interested in the um, mechanisms within a cell which allow proteins to be secreted, we'd focus on those subcellular niches, the organelles that are involved in that, at the expense of getting rid of, of the nucleus, um, which is a very, of the proteins in it can be very abundant. It's really a, a dual thing. One is to have higher multiplexing with the TMT tags, which has allowed us to do a more elaborate fractionation, and then having the accuracy and the sensitivity of the Orbitrap fusion, which has allowed us now to really approach not a complete picture of the cell, but a, a good picture which allows us to map important cellular pathways. The community that I really want to target with this is the cell biology community and it's really winning them over. The proteomics community, um, I mean we've published papers, I've given plenty of talks on the precursor to this. So it's, I think, for people who've been very supportive of the technique, it's nice for them to see how much further we've been able to bring it forward over the last six months. But it's really educating the cell biology community that this method is now out there and what it can do and what it's really showing. It's showing some interesting stuff that we had no idea. Our problem is that we've only got limited resources and limited pairs of hands. We've got very rich data sets and we need that community to sort of come in and make sense of what we've done. My idea is to just get it out there and see what people find in it. Each experiment at the moment is a major undertaking. What I hope is that we can do lots and lots of experiments, one after the other, and that each image of the cell that we get is then like a, a still in a, in a film, you know, a, a, a single image, which then, if you put all these images together, you have a movie of the cell, and, this, and you can, at that point, see proteins moving around uh, together will give us a lot more insight into proteins um, that interact with one another, pathways that interact with one another, and much more insight into what really goes on in cells, particularly in the case of proteins that go off and do something completely different and in different situations.